Welcome in to Sportsbook Review. I'm Chris. I'm Sam. And this is your week two big game breakdown. And we've got a slate of games to talk about. We're excited. But before we do, let me tell you, you got to go to sportsbookreview.com. That is your one-stop shop for all the gaming information that you're going to need this weekend and every week going forward. They've got baseball. They've got football. They've got basketball, hockey, soccer. Whatever the sport is going on, they've got the information. What we care about today is football information. we got articles about all these games that we're going to talk about, guys. People are writing up there. Some of these guys, they know far more than I do. <laughs> They're going to get into the weeds of it better than we are. Give them a read. Give them a listen. And, 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 and we appreciate you going there. Sam, we're going to get into these games. we got five big ones. But oh, yeah. the biggest one of all. Big Ten country. Mm-hmm. The Ohio State Buckeyes are hosting the Oregon Ducks. Yes. This is the biggest rank versus rank matchup we have in the country for the week. Ohio State is a premium program with a brand that is know, second to Alabama, probably nationwide. It's up and, there. I uh, mean, you, you put it online with Clemson for sure, but you know, even Clemson oh, yeah. is. Well, I mean, Clemson's they, new. Ohio State's been the top of the. Top of mind forever, pretty much. That that that's it. That's it. Clemson's new money. Yeah. Ohio State's old money. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. It, neither one of these teams really impressed me in week one at all. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I think Ohio State maybe a little bit more than Oregon. I mean, Oregon. Oh yeah. Ohio yeah. State obviously more than Oregon. They played a better opponent, and and they did they did I guess what they were supposed to do. I was just. I kind of thought they looked flat. They well, didn't look scary. Yeah, no, I mean, I think you look at C.J. Stroud, right, for Ohio State. Uh, his first half of college football play ever, um, he was he was bad. He was 8 of 14 for 58 yards and an interception. Got into halftime. Ryan Day settled him down. Came out in the second half, 5 of 8, 236 yards, four touchdowns. Completely different quarterback. So right. a whole other week of preparation for him. Yeah, you got those first game jitters out. Yes, you've got a very, very talented uh, Oregon team coming into town. You've also got 105,000 screaming people wearing scarlet and red and wearing poisonous nuts around their neck. So he, here's my issue. You're right. This kid looked completely different in the second half than the first half. That is credit to him. It's also credit to Ryan Day in being able to make in-game adjustments. My problem, my issue, and my fear with this is that Minnesota team, we didn't think a lot of offensively. No. And they seem to have no problems moving the football, running the football, throwing it when they had to. Like, they – I'm used to Ohio State's defense being much better than this. Yeah, that, this that's, is, a mis, that's a misnomer. Ohio State's defense is not as good as it has been in years past, especially their past defense. I mean, Tanner Morgan oh, no. was able to – they were missing two corners uh, against Minnesota. So their already thin pass defense was even thinner. Yeah. When I've Mo got, Ibrahim got hurt. Uh, that's right. And In this, yeah. It, the, the, everything changed. Minnesota couldn't run the ball anymore. Then Ohio State was able to sell out against the pass. They started pulling away. M Minnesota had to get away from the run because they needed to try to come back. So that's when right. Ohio State made Minnesota one-dimensional, then I think it – Things seem to kind of click in a little bit more. Even then, you know, Tanner Morgan looked pretty good. Yeah, he looked fine. Listen, it, we got the Oregon Ducks coming in. You want to talk about a team that I think is pretty good offensively. Now, they didn't show a lot in week one. They they play and also ran. They they barely beat them. They probably a lot of people that think they probably should have lost to them. Yeah. Whatever. They won the game. I think they were holding everything they could back. They they've got a first year starter, Anthony Brow, and he. 15 of 24, 172 yards, nothing, okay? No. He just did nothing. But I think they're keeping everything in the pocket. Joe Moorhead knows this Ohio State team. He knows this offense. He knows the defense he's going to – the scheme that they're going to do. Um, it, it, he is the OC at Oregon. I think he's going to have a little something more for them. They were able to run the ball pretty easily uh, in their game, which tells me they were just running a – Super vanilla, very yeah. base package thing. Scored three rushing touchdowns with three different guys. I, 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 I wonder. A, will they be able to run the ball easily on Ohio State because Minnesota seemed to be able to, or 
is this a thing where Ohio State's defense is going to struggle? There's going to be a lot of points here. Let me give you the line stats. The line stats are Ohio State's minus 14.5 as of right now when we're doing this game. You are looking at a 63.5 total. Before both of these two teams played, if you gave me a look-ahead number and told me the number was 63.5, I'd have said take it under. After watching both of these teams play, I'm still I, I, I'm not still taking the under anymore. I've changed my mind. I, I think I like the over in this play more than any other bet. I don't like a side, really. If you make me take a side, I'd probably take the points in Oregon. But but that's I don't love that play. I just like getting more than two touchdowns. Sure. Um, I, I think a big key is going to be if Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, defensive line for Oregon, if he's able to go. I mean, he is their best defensive lineman. He's he their best player. Yeah, he's their best player. He got hurt against Fresno. Un- unclear at this point whether he's going to go or not. And even if he does go, he probably won't be anywhere close to 100%. If that, if he's missing completely, then I'm, I'm going to just double down and hammer the over. Because if, yeah. you know, if Oregon's not going to be able to run rush the passer at all, Stroud can sit back and throw to his multiple NFL wide receivers, I think Ohio State's going to put up some points. He, well, I guess my thought process was I wasn't really worried about him playing because I kind of think Ohio State's going to score if he's in or not. Probably, yeah. Um, and, and a big reason why, I will tell you one thing Stroud did that lots of other first-game starters uh, across the country did not do. He didn't hold the football forever. He was kind of getting it out pretty quickly. He wasn't very accurate, especially in the first half. He couldn't hit anything. Guys were wide open all over the field. He was missing them every which way you can. Figured it out a little bit, calmed down, started processing things a little differently in the second half. I think they were running a different scheme to help him uh, get a little easier throws here and there. But, um, But it wasn't a hold the football forever. Many other quarterbacks this weekend got caught holding the football for what seemed like forever. Right. Um, I don't know. How do you how do you feel about this game? Do you, so you like the over with me. Do you have a side that you like? I mean, it's at home. I'm definitely leaning towards Ohio State in this one. I don't want to step on my official picks, which uh, are okay. coming up later in the show. But uh, I, I, might ha- I might have a little more for you uh, when it comes time to official picks. All right. All right. Well, let's move to the next big game. Got a little Big Ten action coming Mm -hmm. in here as well, but we're being hosted in the Big 12, so we'll give them the credit for it. Iowa Iowa Hawkeyes, I almost said Iowa State Hawk, I got the the states wrong. Iowa Hawkeyes go to Ames to play Iowa State. Yes. And this line, we talked about it when we did the guest alliance. This line blew both of us away. Mm -hmm. Just, Just had me completely shaken at my core. I don't understand how... We have the data that we have on both of these teams in this game. Was it close to a pick them or Ohio, uh, Iowa favored a little bit? The fact that Iowa State opened up as a six point favorite, it is now a four and a half point favorite. Uh, when we did the opening line show, it was a three and a half point favorite. So the line's kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit. I don't, I don't know what to take from this. I know this Iowa football team's defense is really good. All right, it's probably yeah. the best defense Iowa State's going to play the entire year. They struggled to score points against Northern Iowa, who, while they're a pretty good, you know. Nor- Northern Iowa gives people fits. I mean, yes, people overlook they- them, and I think Iowa State might have been caught in a similar situation to Oregon. They didn't want to uh, overplay their hand. I that being right. said, I mean, only I to put up 16 points against, you know, Northern Iowa, weak. you can't do that. Yep. This was a team I thought could be able to run the football at least. You can be vanilla. You can be bland. And I'm not talking about Chip Kelly's run game. <laughs> I'm not talking about Gus Malzahn's run. You can be vanilla and bland and run the football. And you should be able to just, with bigger, stronger offensive linemen, move people out of the way, get first downs, matriculate the ball down the field, and punch it into the end zone a couple of times. You get one rushing touchdown, that's the only, that's the only time you get in the end zone the whole game. I just kind of thought, this was pretty pathetic. I, I wonder how good this offense is. Is Brock Purdy regressing at all? Because I'm going to tell you this. If Northern Iowa, who is a tough championship-level team, not a bowl-level team, um, if their defense is giving you fits, Iowa's going to come in here and lay the lumber on a defensive side. Now, right. 
you and I both understand, we both acknowledge, Iowa's not the greatest offensive football team in the world. Okay, they're going to struggle to get points as well. Iowa State's defense, probably good. I I good, don't but know not that great. They're not as I don't know that they're as good as Indiana's defense. Probably not. And like you know, looking at Iowa's offensive, I mean, Iowa won that game against Indiana with two pick sixes. Two pick sixes. Yeah, right. They got fourteen points spotted to them. And uh, so Tyler Goodson, their running back, nineteen carries for ninety nine yards. Take away the fifty six yard touchdown run, he had a pretty mediocre day yes, yes. He, he busted one long but like that average you take you take it off it you know it's through the floor spencer petrus 145 yards passing not um great. you know 13 to 27 5.4 yards per pass not world bending numbers yeah. yes the final score was much much bigger than it was but you know 14 points yeah it's two pick sixes i i i'm on record i don't love iowa's offense um, yeah, I, I think I you know either. exactly what you're going to get from them. You're going to get, you know, passes to the tight end, uh, passes to the other tight end, and then but, maybe you run up the middle, the, and then the and, and then pass that. to the third tight end. Um, yeah. That that's what they do, and those tight ends are all going to go to the league and become Hall of Famers because that's what Iowa tight ends do. I think Iowa State, it, you know, they they better have been saving something for Iowa because. You know, Brock Purdy, only 199 yards passing. Brees Hall, only 69 yards rushing. Those two guys were being talked about in the Heisman conversation before the season. And if those are the numbers you're putting up against Northern Iowa, that Hawkeye defense is going to come in and is going to be something completely different. So you got to hope that Iowa State is had was saving as much in the tank as they could. I don't know how much that would that's the case because you only beat Northern Iowa by less than one touchdown. So you you need to win that game, but yeah, I, I I also get going vanilla. Let me let me ask this question. Yes. Very simple. Do you think do you think Penix Jr. is better than Brock Purdy or not? Because I know you kind of like both these guys. I do. Um, last, like if it the the big biggest question I have is you know Michael Penix recovering from that knee injury. Is he the same quarterback as he was last year? I don't he did, think he so. did not look. He did not look at uh, against no. Iowa. I agree, but on on surface, I think I like Purdy more than I like uh, just you a, think, as a quarterback. I, I guess I should have asked this question because I want. I'm I'm referring to the interceptions. Sure. Do you think Purdy has potential to throw turn the ball over? They're struggling to score. They're going to try to make something happen, just like Indiana. They got down, you know, two scores, and then and then I got to make a play. Is he more opt to turn the ball over or make the play? Because Penix, when you when you put Penix in a corner, I think he's more opt to turn the ball over than he is to make the play. Yeah, I mean Penix was in a situation where he had to play hero ball. Yep. Um and No, he had no choice. Yeah, no, he exactly. got down he got down three scores. Yeah. But uh I, I think Purdy, I mean, he was twenty one to twenty six for uh, hundred and ninety nine yards passing. Yeah. No touchdowns, no picks. That's efficient passing. If you're able I also to, think Penix is, or, or sorry, Purdy is. I don't mean to cut you off. Purdy's better. I'm just better offensive coaching is coming from from Iowa State than Indiana, right? I'll, I'll buy that. Sure, I, and I think he's a better thrower of the football. He's not nearly as mobile as Penix. <laughs> nope. But that doesn't mean always you won't make the mistake because that's a head thing. It's not a coaching thing, and that's not a mobility, uh, at passing accuracy thing. That's just a. Sometimes it's a it's a between the ears thing. Yeah, I mean, could be, and I I want to see what what Penix does. I want to see what Indiana does. Um, you know, because the adjustments you make from week one to week two are usually the biggest adjustments. Like you you've got, you come out week one, and what happens on the field happens on the field, and no then you go back and you you now have game film to watch. So you know, this is the first week where we actually have some knowledge of this season instead of trying to assume from, from last season. But you know, there's a lot of mismatches in week one. There's a lot of games. You really can't take a lot away from, Uh, but I think in this situation, we know more about Iowa because their opponent, Indiana is supposed to be really, really good. I agree with that. I agree with that. So let's get the stats on the game. You've got Iowa state minus four and a half. The total, we talked about that. The total of this game is your typical big 10 
little number. We think these two teams are going to play defense. 46. I didn't think we'd get to the mid-40s, Sam. I actually thought it'd be higher than this. I was coming in all pumped up, excited to take the over and uh, – or sorry, the under in, in a game that I thought the total would be around 49-50. Yeah. 46 I mean, is – Four six is pretty tight. That's that that's low. I mean, I that's pretty tight. I I kind of like the over on this, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm I, scared I think, now. Yeah, sure. Um, I think Iowa State, if Iowa State's offense can get humming, yes, I think they can score on. I think they can score on Iowa, but Iowa's defense is so good. Will Iowa's offense be able to put up you know the the 20, 25, 24 points that they need in order to to kind of hit that over? I think I, I, I'll tell you this. I think I think Iowa's offense is going to look su- substantially better. While Iowa State's a good team, and I like Iowa State a lot this year, I don't think their defense is close to as good as uh, Indiana's defense. Sure. I think Iowa. Sure. I think Iowa's off. The Hawkeyes are going to be able to move the football. Will they be able to punch it in the end zone, or will they be settling for a bunch of field goals? That might determine how how many points we get. In, as are we busting this over or not? Right. But I think they're going to be in scoring position far more than they were against Indiana. Far more. Sure. And I, I agree. I think Indiana's defense is good. And, you know, the Iowa offense sputtered against a really, really good Indiana defense. So, All right. I, 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 I think I like the over on this one. You like the over. What do you What do you like inside? Um, again, I don't want to step on – I don't want to step on our official picks. But uh, well, It's fine to su- step on the pick. Suffice, we got to give a pick here. Yeah, suffice to say, I am, I'm leaning towards Iowa on here. I mean yeah. – the, the, yes, they're on the road. I think just the way they were playing. I can't believe this They're, they're so better good. than Iowa State. I just, yeah, I, I don't get it. It's more, I get more than a field goal in a game in which I think it's going to be a field goal football game. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're saying these things about Iowa or about Iowa State. I think it's going to be a tight game. I thought this line would, would be as close to a pick as I was going to get. I, I can't. I can't believe I'm getting more than a field goal. Uh, so, I'm, I'm taking Iowa as well. Yeah. Let's, let's move to the great state of Arkansas. The natural state, the diamond state, Arkansas is playing Texas. And Sam, yes, I'm not going to say the phrase that everybody likes to say about Texas. What? But are, Texas are they is back here? No, 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 no. no, no. But they're sorry. But they're, I, had, I had to go there. I had to go there. They're, 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 they might be on their way. Okay, I think they're coming. I, th- I they'll be here in about an hour or two. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I think this Texas team's pretty good, man. Yeah, and, I mean, and it's not it's not the normal Texas, okay? It's not the normal we score a lot, we play Big 12 football. They play pretty good defense. I liked that their offense came from their run game. Yeah. I like that that they ran the football. Let me get some get, let me get to my notes real quick. Um I'm going to I'm going to butcher this name. But John Robinson? B. John I'm Robinson, gonna, yeah. I'm just going to say it real fast so it doesn't matter. 103 yards and a touchdown. My, I thought that number was small because I watched him play, mm-hmm. and this is not a situation where he touched the ball forty times and you know whatever he got a hundred yards. This is a situation where there were multiple times where he was breaking runs for fifteen twenty yards. He when he gets into open space, this kid is really hard to tackle. He yeah. picks his. It's very strange because you watch running backs. I don't know, watch 30 football games Saturday, okay? And he, you watch all these guys do it. When he picks his feet up and puts them down and picks another foot up, it just looks different. Yeah. Nobody's leg tackling him. You're grabbing him and dragging him, or he's dragging you <laughs> before he falls. This kid runs hard, strong, but he's able to run with speed. Usually those super fast guys get tripped up easily. I didn't see that. I think Louisiana um, Lafayette is a good football team, a disciplined defensive football team. They really struggled to stop him. Um, I was I was very I was very impressed by him and 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 what he did. Um, you know, I, th- I think Hudson Card looked really good. Two hundred twenty four yards, fourteen completions, a couple of touchdowns. He's probably the right guy after w- watching watching for one game against what I think is a good defense. Yeah, no, I, I thought Hudson Card looked great. You know, coming in as a freshman, completing two thirds of your passes, I, that that is solid yeah. against a, a good defense in Louisiana. 
Um, one thing that I really liked out of the Texas defense was the way they were controlling the third downs. Louisiana it's was it. only four of 13 on third down. So Texas was getting off the field. That's massive. Huge. Um, you know, on the flip side, you know, we can't forget that Arkansas is in this game, although maybe we probably should forget that Arkansas is in this game. They, they struggled against Rice. They had to, you know, score 31 unanswered, uh, to, to win that game. They were down late and yeah, they, they figured it out and turned it on and and came back to win what looked fairly comfortably at, at the end of the day, but did not impress me whatsoever struggling with, you know, a Rice team that they should have dominated. And, and I think this offense is going to struggle against this Texas defense. I think Texas has got some defense here. Now, I might be wrong about that. Uh, well, you've got it, a Kendall Browse offense, so it's it's very going to be run the ball, go fast, uh, up-tempo, what it typically is. K.J. Jefferson, we'll see how he does against a real team. I wonder how much of this was them playing vanilla because they were playing a rice and then oh shit we're down now we got to score now we got to now we got to break open our bag of tricks and when they did they did it they did it well I don't know why it took two and a half quarters to do that um you know maybe they were trying to hold some things back Smith ran for two hundred yards two hundred yards hundred two yards uh, touchdown Tw- yeah twenty two carries for one hundred two and the, and the touchdown yeah I I I. Th- I don't think Arkansas is bad offensively. Well, uh, let, let me just th- throw this at you. I mentioned third down conversions on Texas's yeah. defense. Arkansas was three of eleven on third downs on their offense, so they're not converting third downs. If Texas is not letting teams convert third downs, Arkansas is going to be getting off the field quickly. And I well, think so. I my think, my yeah. issue with that, my issue with that is, I need to watch that game. Sure. Because sure. I I believe I'm the guy that yells at all the stats guys. So we're giving a lot of stats because people like stats, and and I think they're important now that we have some data to go on. My problem is this: I firmly believe this, and nobody will ever convince me that all numbers lie. Okay, all of them. You can make them say anything you want. I need to watch the game and tell you how they got to that because. If when they struggled for two and a half quarters to move the football, they had all those three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out, three and outs, or not getting the first down on third down. Let's say that. Okay. And then when they went on this run to score 31 points in a quarter and a half, yeah, they didn't. Well, the reason their third down numbers don't look any better is because they never got to third down. They, they just keep getting first down after first down after first down and scoring. And and that is why there are some of those numbers that I always find very, very, very tricky. Some people will look at fourth down stats, and they will say, oh, this team is the best team in the country on fourth down. And I look at another team that has zero fourth down stats. And I say, well, hmm, are they? Or, or is this team that never runs on fourth down? Yeah, I, I think fourth down stats are definitely trickier than third down stats. Um, you know, Every team gets the third down. Not everyone goes for it on fourth down. So You're right. But in a game where you did nothing for two and a half quarters right. and then a lot for one quarter, I need to know when that happened. Sure. I need to know that on third down you're not getting off the field when it matters because when they obviously flipped a switch and turned something on, it it, it went berserk and they weren't able to be stopped. I, uh, I, I have to wonder, and you know we've talked about this already today, how many coaches are getting in their own heads? Right, trying to trying to hold it back, trying to prepare for the future. Oh, um, yeah. And like, shouldn't you just go out? I mean, you play twelve games a year, right? You have to, like the idea is to win every single one of them. You should be able to. Like, if it was me, you go out, you play as hard as you can, as long as you can, every single game, <laughs> every single play. You don't hold stuff back because, like, you're get. I think these coaches are getting in their heads, thinking, "Oh, yep. I'm." You know, they start playing chess games and you know start getting all galaxy brain but like get it on the field go out there and you know okay so you're putting stuff on tape if you're that confident in your team who cares what you're putting on tape right but i think i think you're talking about arkansas playing texas and 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 let's say oregon playing ohio state let's say oh iowa state playing iowa that they are worried about what's on tape they are, but they're not confident in their teams because of the opponent that they're playing. You know right. what I'm saying? Like right. I don't, I don't think Ohio State held anything back because they're not worried. Right? They're not afraid. I, I do think those other teams are afraid. 
Okay. And and I, there's a world where Iowa held a whole lot back, and there's a world where Indiana just didn't let them score. Yeah, but I, th- I think we're living in that world, honestly. Let's let's move on. Let's move yes. on. This game, I was well, super before, excited before about. we move on. Like, what what's oh, your yeah. what's your pick? What what do you think? Yeah, I'm sorry, we didn't even we didn't go through that. the The side is 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 Texas minus six and a half, and the total is fifty seven. Oh, I mean, if you made me pick. An SEC team at home. I'm going to tell you this. Fayetteville's going to matter. I said it last week. Blacksburg was going to matter. Okay? And and I'll be damned if Blacksburg didn't matter. Yeah. Right? Fayetteville's going to matter. Okay? Those Hog fans are going to show up, and this game is going to be different than that Louisiana game. It's going to be different. I think I'd take, I think I'd take Arkansas. I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it not one bit. You make me. Buy a ticket for it. I'll get the smallest ticket I can, and I'm taking Arkansas. I'm taking an SEC team catching almost a touchdown. And I know that SEC doesn't always mean anything. Arkansas hasn't been really good in a long time. I do think this team is more improving. And I wonder at some point in time, is Louisiana just not as good? You know, while I like Billy Napier, I'm going to tell you this. Barry Odom, as a defensive coach, Far better than 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 anybody on Louisiana's football team. Sure, okay? and and Kendall Browse as an offensive coach, far better than anybody on Louisiana's offensive side. Yeah. So so I I, I just think we're going to see a different Arkansas team here. You're going to get this thing at night in Fayetteville, and and that's going to matter. Total wise, I'd, I'd go under. I'd go yeah. under. I'd go under. I'd go under fifty, almost sixty points. I don't think I don't think we're scoring that. I'm I'm going Texas on this, you know. It, it's probably a smart play. Yeah, I mean, I just think they're a better team than Arkansas, and yeah, it's a touchdown on the road, but uh, I I think Texas is better. You know, are they back? Yeah. We don't know, but I like the but, direction that they're going after one game under Sark. I think Texas is better. I, I agree with you on that. I agree. If I wasn't catching almost a touchdown, this answer. If you tell me who's going to win the game, I think I'd pick Texas. You know. So, neither here nor there. Let's 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 move to the big house. Yes. I was crazy excited about this game <laughs> when I saw the schedule. Yeah, and then Washington came and cocked it all up. Sam. Oh my god, I have no idea. Like, my whole mind is blown by how terrible Washington looked against Montana. I, um, I looked at I the, looked at these stats, Sam. I'm going to yeah. cut you off because I'm going to let you talk for a minute here. I looked at these Washington stats. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with them. What you what you should do with them is is see that they turned the ball over a lot. Dylan Morris to three a, interceptions. To, you know, twenty seven to forty six for two hundred twenty six yards, the three picks, no touchdowns. Um, you know, they they couldn't really run the ball. Richard Newton seventeen carries, sixty two yards uh, to lead that team. They turned the ball over. They couldn't get things going, and. You know, maybe they were out thinking themselves, you know, trying not to hold anything, trying to keep stuff off tape for Michigan, which, again, I'm on. I, I don't like that. But uh, we well, definitely got to win the game. Yes, yeah, the you problem. have to win the you, game. That's it's the OK to do that. If you're if you're winning the game, if you're getting your ass kicked by Montana, then you got to throw all that shit out the window. Yeah, I mean, like, sure. The final score was 13 to seven. So there were not. I mean, Washington wasn't scoring. They weren't moving the ball. Nope. Yeah, their their defense kept Montana off the board a lot, but not enough. But, like, you should be able to give up 13 points to Montana and comfortably win that game. Now you got to go to the big house at night. You know, that place is going to be fired up. Um, yeah, I, I know Michigan doesn't get the same kind of reputation as Ohio State for being a tough place to play, but the big—I mean, that's still a hundred thousand people. No, where, and the big where, house will be fired up. They'll yeah. be ready. They—they they got a couple of big injuries that happened in their game. Yeah, and, Lo- and that, and losing that Ronnie Bell for the year definitely huge. hurts Michigan a oh, lot. That took that took the wind out of my sails because you—you you have listened to me in group chats over the last I don't know five years, however long we've been friends. I'm, I am the one Michigan apologist that, that we all know and talk about. I have no idea why, by the way. I, I don't have any connection to the school at all. I just I, – I've always – I guess I understand. When they're bad, I understand. Yeah. And when they're good, I understand. And I, I – the key to happiness this – is, this is not gambling advice, folks. This is just live advice, right? The key to happiness is 
perception minus reality. And if you end up with positive on that, you're good. If you end up in the negative, you're bad. If you think your your life's goal is to win national championships and you're a Michigan fan, you're going to be sad. Yeah. Okay? All the time. A- ask a Nebraska fan. Winning, <laughs> if you think winning nine games a year is spectacular, hey, you can be a really happy football fan all the time time yeah. every now and then you'll get an eight win season or a da- disastrous seven win season and you'll just feel like your world is ending and then every now and then you'll get a 10 win season maybe win a bowl game go 11 and 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 it's just christmas every day of your life it's it's all about perception Man- I think managing I have expectations a, i have a healthy understanding of that which is why i well, don't understand the but i also you don't do. understand most the michigan, michigan fans don't no i get it well but i'm talking about the people that hate michigan if you're not an Ohio State fan, even if you are an Ohio State fan, how do you hate this school? Like, I don't, I don't know how you hate someone you constantly beat the hell out of. Yeah, it's, it's. I mean, it's because I think Michigan thinks of themselves so high. I mean, they, they think that they should be winning the East every year. They do, they do. Okay. Um, and like they, Michigan fans have this level of arrogance about them. And they have not had the the product on the like they haven't beaten Ohio State in how long? Yeah, and, but that can't they, be your that can't be your measuring tool. And yet for Michigan it is like Michigan oh, goes one and eleven. If that one is beating Ohio State, people are happy. That's insane. If I, they go eleven and one, insane. and You're one is right. getting beat by Ohio State, they're not happy. That's insane to me. Sure, it is. And yet, like I that, just find that, that is the mind ridiculous. of a Michigan fan. We're not we're not talking about this game enough. Michigan is a six and a half point favorite. The the total is forty nine. Sam is Washington scoring. Not if they look the same way as they did against Montana. Right, so let's assume let's assume they're a much better team than what they put out on Montana. Okay, it, substantially better than yeah. what we saw at Montana because you can't take anything from Montana's game. No, and nor nor can you really take a lot from you know Michigan beating Western Michigan. I well, not, I mean they they beat they beat somebody who, who they probably beat. could beat Washington. Possibly. So if you want to do the circular reasoning, Western Michigan is probably better than Washington, and they beat the hell out of Western Michigan. Yeah, I still don't. I'm not in love with Michigan's defense. I think there's there's weaknesses there, and if Washington's offense can figure something out, I mean, they didn't have anything figured out against Montana. But if they can, nope. you know, if they have enough in the in their back pocket to to turn it on, I think they can put up some points against Michigan. At the end of the day, I think Michigan wins this game fairly handily. I do too. Forty nine. What do you think? So we both would take Michigan if we're going to make a pick on yes. it. We're going to just tell you we both like Michigan. Forty nine points. Would you go over or under this? Because I'm kind of scared to go over. Yeah, I, I, let's I would say lean under. Washington scores. I don't know thirteen. Yeah, I, I would. I would go under. I think Washington's defense is is decent. If, if I do not think, good, I do think that I do think Washington's going to be a better defense than Western Michigan or whatever. Oh, clearly. Like, so so yeah, I mean I, I don't I don't foresee them dropping a forty burger again. Man, I don't know. It's the total is hard for me. The side is very easy in this one for me. Yeah, agreed. I, I, I mean, it, I just it's, see it. It's Michigan. It's tra- yeah, for me, if it's a I, trap. I'm done. For me, it's the under. Like I I think it'll probably go. I think it'll go under. Um, but Michigan is is winning this game. I just wonder: is there a world where Michigan keeps them from scoring at all? Because I do think Michigan's defense is. I don't know, ten times better than uh, uh, Montana's. Maybe, I mean, I, maybe I I don't love Michigan's defense. That's fine. That's fine. Let's let's move to the Holy War. Yes. This is the last big game that we're going to break down. Then we're going to hit some rapid fires because we're already thirty something minutes into this thing. You got Utah going to BYU. Utah's minus seven. This total is forty eight. This total is exactly where I thought it would be. I'm talking right under fifty. Uh, you know, it, not not more than fifty, and and probably not less than forty six is what I was kind of thinking. Um, Charlie Brewer looked fine. Yeah. Went back and, and, and watched some some YouTube. I like Charlie Brewer. I find him very likable. I think he's got good leadership qualities. Yeah, he was very disappointing at Baylor. Um, Weird situation at Baylor. I mean, like, yes, just a bizarre situation. That's right. That's but right. I changing. Yeah. Like Changing you, coaches multiple times. Like you, I'm a fan of Charlie Brewer. You know, he 
he did good. They they played Weber State, which you know That's is right. a team they should have handled easily, and they did. 19, and they did nineteen to twenty seven, two thirty three, two touchdowns, one pick. Um. You know that, that that's a solid line from Charlie Brewer. I mean, he's coming into a new, you know, coming in as a transfer, new system, new everything. But uh, you know, they were able to run the ball. Uh, that's T- it. Tavian Thomas went twelve carries for one hundred seven, two touchdowns. Uh, Utah moved the ball. They were they were scoring. They moved the ball. They looked good against well, the team. They should have done. That's what Utah wants to do, right? Yeah. They want to run the football yes. on you. They want Charlie Brewer to be a game manager, make a play when either you have to or when the team, the defense is not expecting it. Um, they're not afraid to take shots, but they don't want that to be their offense. They want to beat you in the trenches. They want to be more physical than you. They want to run the ball down their throat. I think they can do that. I think they're a really good football team. I want to go to BYU for a minute. Jaron Hall, 200 yards, two touchdowns. They rushed for about a 160 as a team. I, I – I don't think this BYU team is as bad as most people thought they were going to be after losing Zach Ta- uh, Wilson and, and and all the you know the, the other players that they had, they had lost. Um, everyone just kind of made it seem like oh they're just going to fall to the pits of hell. I don't see that at all. Yeah, no, I mean they're not. I mean obviously they're going to take a step back when you have the number two pick in the sure. draft. As quarterback, you know, lead you to a magical season. They're going to take a step back. They went to Vegas in week one and beat Arizona, a team that I think a lot of pe- a lot of people are going to beat. It wasn't convincing. I mean, it, but twenty four sixteen. That's that's a W, and they they did what they needed to do. Um, they gave up a lot of yards, though. I mean, I I don't love that they gave up four hundred twenty six yards to Arizona. That that concerns me. Especially when you've got a Utah team coming in with Charlie Brewer, who can throw the ball, and that running game that they want to have, I I think Utah's offense is going to be able to do some stuff against this BYU defense. Yeah, I do too. I think that's where that's where I struggle. I think BYU can can move the ball on on Utah. I think they will move the ball on Utah. They're not going to score a ton. Um, because Utah's defense is good, but I believe we just kind of live in a world where a bend but don't break kind of thing. This is just where all the defenses go now. Um, but you're right. Can they stop the run game? Can they stop Charlie uh, and what the offense – not that this is a high-powered offense, but they're a strong offense or a yeah. physical offense. This game, A, I'm going to tell you, I've watched this game almost every year. This game's going to get chippy. <laughs> this game's going to get dirty at some yep. point in time. Yellow flags are going to come out in big moments in this game because something's happened. I've I've just seen this movie too many times. I I don't know how it's going to end, but I'm going to tell you at some point in time somebody wearing a striped shirt is going to have a meaningful impact on this game. And the hard part is is you don't know who's going to be the the receiver of that and mm-hmm. the, and, and, and the giver of that. And that's that's where I worry I also think it's just too easy to take Utah. The whole world is just disappointed with BYU and what they are, and I feel like that scares the hell out of me. This is a game I will not have action on. I will not be betting on at all. Um, If you made me, I might take the over because I do think these teams will score a little, but I'm just talking, you know, 23-27 to wins this game. But if 23-27 wins the game, then – then I'm then BYU's covering no matter who's on top. You sure, know? and like looking at the looking at the betting numbers, they're coming in even both sides. I mean, th- this yeah, is no. this is right where I think everyone expects this to be. Utah favored by seven. Um, I like the Utes here. Uh, yep. You know, it, I I just think they're you know they're a better team. Uh, you know, Pac-12 versus a team that will be in the Big Twelve before too long. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's Pac-12 after dark, right? I mean, it's a 10-15 Eastern kick, uh, on ESPN. So, you know, stay up late, have a few cocktails and, and watch this one, you know, as, as you're falling asleep. And, uh, th- there could be some fireworks, I think. Well, I think they're going to be fireworks. I think it's going to be a fun game. Um, I just, 
I don't like laying that many points in a big rivalry game. That's sure. my only – that's my – I just feel weird about that kind of stuff, you know. I, it just makes me – and then also think that house is going to be rocking. Okay, they, It, always, it I, always is. I mean, that, I, think, that, I think this is a huge rivalry, and this is not one of those situations where they're splitting this thing 50-50. All right, there's going to be a lot of blue and white. Yeah, no, I, I, I think yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it's going to be a rocking atmosphere. It always is. Uh, will there be fights in the stand? Probably there usually are, um, you know, these two fan bases don't like each other either. So I, I think I'm going to like, if you, you know, force me to, I would, I would also stay away from this one, but uh, I, I think, you know, make, make me make a pick. It's going to be Utah. There you go. All right. Let's, let's move into the rapid fire stuff, baby. We got to go. Let's yes. go fast. Let's go hard. Sam, lead us off. Where are you starting? All right. We're going to talk about uh, Pitt and Tennessee. Pitt is a two and a half point favorite. Uh, total is 56. Um, you know, both teams handled their business last week. Uh, my biggest concern is that Joe Milton only threw for 140 yards against Bowling Green. Um, you know, Pitt took, like, they, Pitt was great. They yeah. did whatever they wanted to against UMass, 223 rushing yards, 375 passing yards. Um, so I, I like what Pitt is doing offensively. Yes, Tennessee put up points. Uh, they were able to run the ball. Both uh, Tyon Evans and Jabari Small uh, went for 116 yards on the ground. Um, I like Pitt here to go on the road, to go down to, you know, go down to Knoxville. If Joe Milton can't get it going in the air, then I, I don't know how how Tennessee is going to score, and I I liked what Pitt, I saw from Pitt. So uh, my lean here is is Pitt minus two and a half. There you go. I'm going to take the Florida Gators going to South Florida to play um, in Tampa down there. This line is Florida minus twenty eight. It's a big number. Totals fifty eight. That's a big number. Emory Jones. For Florida, the hot young star supposed to be the next coming of of, of Dan Mullen's offense. Mm, fair to Midland, 17 of 27 for 113 yards, one TD. You know, a I, I, couple interceptions, didn't look great. Uh, game one, let me tell you what's going to make him look real good. South Florida's defense. <laughs> South Florida, I don't know what the hell happened, but South Florida, South Florida used to be a really good football team in Florida. They were they were a good G five school. They they have just become complete trash. They got smoked forty five to nothing. Okay, I think Florida is going to beat the hell out of this team. Will they bust twenty eight? Probably. Yeah. I, I don't know where it's going to go. Florida's going to look a lot better than they looked week one. I'll tell you that. They got they have to. They can't look worse. I don't think they look very good. Can they bust 58 by themselves? Because I don't know that South Florida's getting in the end zone against this Florida defense. Not that they're world beaters. Not that they're, you know, the second coming of the 85 Bears kind of thing. It's just you don't have to be a great defense against South Florida. They're not any good at football. And I don't know what in the hell happened. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, next game we're going to talk about, we're going to the Mile High City. Uh, the Texas A&M Aggies heading to Denver to play at Broncos Stadium against uh, the Colorado Buffaloes. Um, A&M just looked really, really good uh, in week one. Colorado, yeah, they, they beat Northern Colorado like they should. They didn't look great doing it. Colorado only had 102 passing yards, uh, 281 rushing yards against uh, Northern Colorado. You know, Haynes King, great debut for A&M. 21 of 33, 292 uh Yards, two touchdowns. The three interceptions I'm a little concerned about against Kent State, but uh, you know they also had 303 rushing yards. A and M's offense is going to be humming. My only concern, you know, they're a 17 point favorite, you know, in Denver. My only concern is late in the game, will they gas out with the altitude? That's yeah. a legitimate issue. Um, I I don't think they will. Uh, but you know, Texas A and M minus 17. The totals. Only 50 and a half, 50.5 with that big of a spread. So, yeah, you know, I think we're expecting a lot of Aggie and not a lot of Buffalo. Going up to Penn State, the Nifty Lions bringing in a MAC team that has been kind of one of the bullies of the MAC for the last two years. Ball State coming into the house. This is not somebody you want to just invite into your house and let them go rupshaw, okay? Ball State's a 
good football team. David Plight, quarterback Ball State last week, threw for 118 yards, two touchdowns. They run the football, rushing 216 yards. This Pitt defense, Pitt, this Penn State defense, sorry, same state, wrong place, substantially better than anything Ball State's going to play the rest of their life. Yep. Okay? This is a suffocating, suffocating defense. Offensively, I don't know what Sean Clifford is. I don't know what this team is going to be. They got the ability to make some big plays and take the top off the defense, which gives you a little bit of relief from the, all that pressure. But can they sustain it? I don't know. I The line, 22-and-a-half Penn State, man, that's too many points. It's just too many points only because Ball State is no joke. Ball State is not some – Punk ass Mac team that's gonna come in and you're gonna push them around. They're just not. Total 57. I think I'd take the under. It scares me. It's a lot of points. I don't think either one of these teams are gonna score a lot. Uh next we are going down to Coral Gables, uh, where the Miami Hurricanes will be hosting App State. Um Miami just I mean they didn't even bother to go play Alabama. That was that was a terrible performance. Um, you know, App State took care of business against ECU. Uh, Chase Bryce, quarterback for App State, 2027, 259 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. De'Aaron King had a, had a rough game. Yeah, you know, he looked awful. 23 looked 31, awful. only 178 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Miami's going to struggle here, but they need to figure out if they want to be a good team or not. App State coming to town is I mean, that, that's a huge game for them. Yeah, that's national stage, you know, ESPNU um, under the lights. I don't know. I mean, Miami should win this one handily. They're a they're only a seven and a half point home favorite, which makes me a little nervous. Um, I I would lean almost App State on the road here. Um, Fifty three and a half is the total. I I just don't know. I I. Miami should be able to score a lot of points, but, you know, against, well, against Alabama, which is an amazing team, they didn't. So they're going to need to figure out how, if, you know, if they want to be a good football team this year, App State is a good place to, if they are going to be good, you want to make a statement against a, a plucky App State team. That's right. That's right. All right, Sam, I'm going to Southern California. Let's do it. Stanford Cardinal coming in and... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you a new word. It's a Mississippi word, just because you're wondering. They got mollywopped <laughs> by Kansas State this weekend. I'm talking, this game was 24 to nothing. I know the score is going to say 24 to 7. It's because they gave them a touchdown at the end of the game. The definition of garbage time, Kansas State is just trying to not get guys hurt. And just go on, guys. This is what you can do. Stanford's going to throw a couple of different quarterbacks out there. Neither one of them are going to be any good. Okay, USC's defense is good. I don't know that they're as good as Kansas State because I think I might have underrated Kansas State's defense a lot. I'll tell you this, Stanford better hope I underrated them a hell of a lot because they looked bad. I don't know that Stanford's going to be good. I think this is David Shaw's last year. I think he is about to get shown the door. USC, USC might beat the hell out of this team. Yeah. This line, 17, total 52. I, I can't get to 52 unless USC is going to give me 45. <laughs> okay, but there's a world where USC is going to give me 45, so I'm staying away from the total. I like USC to cover this line. This should be a beatdown of epic proportion, unless David Shaw. There, the last several years, I have argued with people, and they have all told me David Shaw is top ten coach. David Shaw is a, who the hell are we top top ten in the Pac-12? Because I don't even know if that's <laughs> I don't even know if that's the truth. By the way, um, anyway. This is a bad football team playing what I think is a good football team, and this is going to be a one-sided affair. Uh, finally, for our uh, quick hits, our rapid fire, uh, we are going to Starkville, where North Carolina State is coming in to the dog pound. Uh, do they call it the dog pound? If they don't, they probably should. Um, <laughs> no, they don't call it the dog pound. <laughs> ah, that's a shame. Um, but the cowbells will be ringing uh, loud and proud. But NC State – took care of South Florida, 45 to nothing. And Mississippi State needed Louisiana Tech to miss a field goal. 
they needed to score a ton of points. Uh, they were down largest tw- comeback in Startville history. They were down twenty and came back to take a one point lead and still almost lost. The model of inconsistency is Mississippi State. That's right. I I mean I love Mike Leach. I love him so much. I would love to sit down in a bar, buy him a couple beers, and just listen to him talk all day long. I think he's a hell of a coach. But the inconsistency is is massive. NC State looked fantastic. Yeah, they were playing South Florida, a team that you just said, and I agree with you, is Bad. garbage. But um, yeah, I, NC State's going to Starkville. They're going to win. It's only a two and a half point spread. You know, they're going to they're going to win by a, over a field goal, I think. So uh, give me the Wolfpack here. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in on this one, and then we'll then Please we'll do. get out and we'll we'll get in our things. I I love Mike Leach. It is and I have not hidden that at all. I worship at this man's feet. I think he is a a genius for offense that yeah. we may have never seen. And all of these guys that are running this run and shoot high tempo up tempo spread offenses, yeah, yeah, they all got it from him. Okay, he he was doing that shit back in the '90s at Kentucky. At, at, at go go ask the Cleveland Browns, my brownies. Go ask them why why they they spent a first overall draft pick on a on a quarterback from Kentucky when he got to the NFL. wasn't very good. Nope, didn't know what he was doing. Nope, and and it was just that's Mike Leach. That's just what he did. Uh, I think NC State's the second best team in the ACC. I I thought that. Going into the season, I was told by lots of people I was dead wrong. North Carolina and Miami are head and shoulders better than them. Right now, I'm not getting off my horse of the NC State. Let's move into our gambling picks, Let's do Sam. It. We're going to run through these. I'm going to go fast because I don't have a whole lot to say. I'm just going to tell you who I like. I'll tell you why I like them, and then I'm going to get the hell out because we're going long. Oklahoma State minus 12 and a half versus Tulsa. Tulsa has lost their heartbeat. Tulsa lost the two quarterbacks on both sides of the football. It, when you lose that kind of leadership, it doesn't matter how much talent you bring back. If the new people taking in those those leadership roles don't know how to handle them, I think Oklahoma State is going to roll. I think this offense is going to be better. I think I, I'm expecting, I'm making this pick, expecting Spencer Sander to be back. Okay, let's let's say that. Sam, who you got? I am going to start off. Uh, talked about this already, uh, but I'm going to take Texas A&M minus 17 in Denver against uh, my hometown Buffaloes. I hate betting against Colorado, but you know, in, in this case, Texas A&M is just a much, much better team. Uh, Colorado can't move the ball against Northern Colorado. How the hell are they, they going to move the ball against A&M? Uh, so give me the Aggies minus 17 on the road. All right, Sam, this is a game I think we both kind of oh, like yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. Buffalo Bulls mm-hmm. are going to Nebraska, a team we, we have picked on quite a bit. And will continue to do so, yes. I'm not going to I'm not gonna quit. I'm not going to quit. Nope. I'm not getting off this train. I'm taking Buffalo plus 12 Love at it. Nebraska. I think there's no way on earth Nebraska, Nebraska shouldn't be 12-point favorite over anybody that's not – a top 100 team? I mean, sure, if UConn and UMass <clears throat> and, and, and New Mexico State, all right, maybe. But that that's the list, man. I'm going to do you one better. I'm going right. to say Buffalo on the money line plus 465. Jesus. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, crazy. I mean, yeah. Nebraska, right. I, I do not like Nebraska whatsoever. I think Scott Frost is not long – uh, for the you know for the head coaching job of the Cornhuskers, they looked terrible against Nebraska. They looked bad against Fordham for a little while, and Buffalo is a, a much better, better, better Fordham. team than Fordham. Fordham, uh, yeah. G- g- give me the Buffalo money line plus four sixty five. You win this bet, Scott Frost employed Monday. Twenty million dollars buyout. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. If Getting your ass beat by Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, if you lose to Buffalo and then you're going to get curb stopped by Oklahoma the next week. Yeah, you no, no, you definitely hang on. You don't fire him because you don't let an interim take that beating. No. That, your penance for if I'm going to fire you, you're going to take that L, and then we'll let the new guy 
take no, the rest of the L's. I honestly think you you let him coach out the year and you you and get take that, all the L's. You, yeah, you get that buyout. You got to get that buyout down. You know. At, yeah. Or yeah, or you got to or you got to manufacture well, another uh, NCAA violation. Uh, I don't that, I, I don't have the stones to to go money line, but I'm definitely taking the two scores. Let's do it. So my next pick, Sam. We've talked about it earlier. I'm mm-hmm. not going to break it down. Iowa is a better football team than Iowa State. I I think home field should make this game close to a pick 'em, and I get more than a, a field goal. I, I I can't not take the Hawkeyes. It, Hawkeyes plus three and a half. Take it. Say you're welcome. I'm I'm right there with you. That's my next pick too. Um, Iowa my, Iowa plus three and a half. It's just surprising and. The fact that the the number is going towards Iowa State gives me a little, you know, makes yeah. me a little nervous. Is does Vegas know something that that I don't? The, the answer is yes. Vegas knows a lot that I don't. Yeah, but know, uh, it that gives me a little bit of pause that you know, still a lot of money is coming in on Iowa State here. But yeah, I was just they're good. They're real good. My next pick, I'm going to pick on somebody who's not very good at football. Sam, do it. Nebraska again. No. No, 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 no. This team's substantially worse than Nebraska. Nebraska beats the hell out of this team. This is the team I brought up, though. UMass. UMass. Boston College is a good football team, guys. There's a world where Boston College is like a top three or four, maybe five, definitely. I think that would easily put them top five in the ACC. I think they're I think they're a really good program. I think they can score, baby. I think they can score a lot of points. I think they will score a lot of points. They're going to need to. They're laying 37 against UMass. I don't know that I care. This line got up to 42. I wouldn't care. I think they're going to beat the hell out of them, man. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, my next pick, marquee game of the day, Ohio State and Oregon. Uh, we have talked about this at the top of the show. I don't need to break it down again. But uh, I'm I'm going on record. I think Ohio State wins this by uh, more than two touchdowns. Give me the Buckeyes. There you go. All right, all right. You got them at 14. You can find this line at a lot of places. A lot of places are 14 and a half now. So if you like the number, get it as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, so my my last pick. I'm going to the big house, man. And and I I'm the defender of Michigan, and I'll just be it. It'll just be a fat guy from Mississippi. Okay. I, I think this team is good. I think Jim Harbaugh is going to coach circles uh, around what Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin, what Washington brings to the table. I don't think this Washington team is good. I'm I'm a little annoyed at people always tell me they are, and I just think you're going to come into the big house. You're going to have a hundred thousand people strong under the lights at the big house, which they don't play a lot of those games, and and I think it's going to be shocking. So we're going to go ahead and finish it off. Um, Purdue traveling to Stores, Connecticut to take on the Yukon Huskies. We talked about them. I mean, you mentioned them earlier in the bad team category. Randy Etzel, head coach of Yukon, says, uh, I'm going to retire at the end of the year. Uh, th- this, is, this is not going well. I'm out of here. Yukon says, nah, hit the bricks, kid. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Um, so you're you, out now. Yeah, bye bye. Um, oh. Purdue is, I think, a, a bottom team in the Big Ten West, but I don't oh, care. God. It's thirty three and a half points. It's on the road. Give me the Boilermakers. UConn is garbage. The shocking thing about this game is that it's a UConn. That's like, why in the hell is Purdue going to UConn to play a football <laughs> I game? I don't know. Anyway, I don't listen, know. I'm sure. I'm sure Connecticut's nice. I'm sure it's a beautiful place, and yeah. I'm sure they'll enjoy their trip there. They'll <laughs> kick their ass, and they'll come home, guys. That's our show. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you joining us. Go to sportsbookreview.com for all your gambling information. They're gonna have articles about. Oh, so many of these games we hit, they'll have articles about games we didn't hit. They got a lot of people that work there, and they're really smart, and they're really good at what they do. Come back next week. We will see you Saturday morning for our live show. Come back and see us. 9 a.m. the Lord's time, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, for Sportsbook for you, I'm Chris. I'm Sam. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.